My name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Producing Video Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about an issue that really befuddles a lot of people, and that is square pixels versus non-square pixels. Now, this is not a topic I like to dwell on, not because I hate it so much, just I'm always asked about it. I certainly understand it, so I'm going to give you the fast version. And if you want to engage me more in depth on it, you can check out our blog where we've got lots of in-depth coverage. So let's jump in and really make this plain and simple. Here's the issue. When you're delivering video to the web or an iPod, a Zune, any of those devices, the pixels need to be square. That's because the video needs to be a nice regular shape like 640 by 480 for a big video file or 320 by 240. If you're doing widescreen video, then it's 640 by 360, and that's width by height. Now, that sounds all fine, right? Problem is, when you shoot the video, that's not how the cameras shoot it. So, for example, I've got a video file opened up here, just a standard definition video clip. And if I look at this video file here, let's just play it. This is a piece of stock footage from Digital Juice, and I picked it, not because I don't really feel like going to Vegas right now and trying to change our economic luck, but because it had a big giant circle inside of it. And if you look at that circle, it doesn't look quite right. In fact, it's just a little bit distorted by about 10%. And that's the problem here. When we're shooting on video cameras, they use non-square pixels. In fact, even if you're doing high definition, virtually all of those cameras also shoot non-square pixels. And that's because camera manufacturers cheat. They use the same sensors in the camera, and you could flip between shooting 4x3 and 16x9. So the same camera sensor, the same tape, the same digital media card shoots the same thing. What happens is, is when you move that video into your editing system, it looks correct. That's why when you open up a raw QuickTime movie and you look at it, it looks just a little bit off. So in this particular movie here, you see about a 10% distortion throwing those circles out. Let's press Command or Control I and call up the inspector here. And you'll see that this particular clip is 720 by 486. Now it's doing that because this was shot with professional video equipment like a beta gear. And beta cameras shoot 720 by 486 to tape. If you're shooting DV, you're likely going to see 720 by 480. And that's just a slight difference in the acquisition size, but it's really not a big deal in today's day and age. If you have QuickTime Pro, you can actually press Command J, and that's going to bring up the Properties window. Let's pull this down here and take a look at the video track properties. And if you look right here, you see the particular size. I'm going to uncheck Preserve Aspect Ratio and change this to 640. Now take a look at that circle. It, in fact, looks like a circle. Undo. There it is versus the corrected size. Now, if you can't see the difference between that, you need to practice. Or you might be in the wrong field. A 10% distortion should be noticed by a video professional. Now, with that said, I see it go unnoticed all the time. From people stretching regular television broadcasts to fit their 16x9 plasmas, to web video that's just not encoded right. Here's the deal. If you have video that was shot, let's say on a digital video camera, at 720 by 480 you need to reshape it during your compression tool stage. This means that whether you're using compressor, squeeze, stomp, MPEG stream clip, any of these tools, there is the option to resize the video. And what you need to do is specify the following. If it is a 4x3 video, standard shape, like a square more or less, your regular television, the 4x3 aspect ratio, that means that you need to go ahead and resize it to 640x480 or a multiple thereof. You might do 320x240 if it was going to a web player. On the other hand, if you're doing 16x9 video, that 720x480 digital video file needs to get stretched out to 860x480 
or better yet, 640 by 360. That's the size you need to do in order to make it compatible. For example, if you're going to be putting it on a widescreen device like an iPhone or an iPod Touch, that 640 by 360 or 320 by 180 is the correct shape when you're putting it on a screen like this. So, pretty straightforward sort of things, but you need to do that step to reshape. Every video compression tool has this. Even QuickTime Pro gives you this option, but people skip it all the time. If you're shooting in high definition, you're going to face the same challenges. Whether it's HDV or DVC Pro HD, they also use non-square pixels. The best bet there is to reshape it. It's either going to go to 1920 by 1080 or 1280 by 720 when you export. Then it'll go down from there. The standard workflow for an Apple TV or the iPod specs for high definition is that you make one version that's 1280 by 720 if it's 24 frames per second or 960 by 540 if it's 30 frames per second. Beyond that, just drop it to 640 by 360 for the remaining standard definition or iPod delivery sizes. You can find out a lot more about these delivery specs by visiting the iTunes Tech Spec page. Just go to Apple's website and do a quick search for iTunes Technical Specs and you'll find a detailed wiki page with lots of information about the particular sizes you should be using for delivery to the iPod standard. And you're saying, I don't care about the iPod standard? You should, because that's still about how 60 to 70 percent of the market is getting their podcast video. So follow those specs and it will work with everything else. For producing video podcasts, my name's Rich Harrington. You can find out more at our website at vidpodcaster.com. And of course, be sure to check out the book, Producing Video Podcasts from Focal Press.